This week on Backyard Footy. Last question for me. Give me your best 11 you've played with and why. What for me? Give me your formation and give me your players from goalkeeper up. All right. Can it be all these guys at their prime? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, goalkeeper, go Pac Man. Mm -hmm. He pulls off some crazy saves. Nah, I gotta give him that to him. Uh, I'll go left back, Andrew Goodman. Mm. It's a good one. Fuchs left center back. We're playing. What are we playing? Four, th four, three, three. I'm just keep this. Four, three, three. Okay. Three. Okay. Fuchs, Fuchs left center back. Okay. Steven Tico, right center back. Steve. Um, shout out Steve. Steve. Shout out Steve. They like, taught me a lot. They taught me a lot. We're going all these guys in their prime. They taught um, me a lot. Right back Joel when he played La Liga. Mm -hmm. He says he doesn't like to defend now. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, center mid. Um, you know I'm from my brother Brent Bronico. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. Uh, so I'll go BB13 center mid with Enzo. Mm -hmm. And... Um... Got an attitude. Sup, my boy? It's good. Long, long time. I appreciate yeah. you. It's been three years or so since you last came on, bro. Good. How's your, how's your family done, though? Newborn just came through. Talk to us about your family a little mm -hmm. bit. Good, man. Uh, since the last time I was on here, uh, Callum, two months, or two years and like eight months old. So he's the oldest, Callum. And then Caden, he's nine months now. And my wife and I have been married for almost four years. So uh, things are going really well. Uh, a lot of blessings for our family. So we couldn't be happier. Amen, man. How's that change of routine now? Oh, it's different. Kids, yeah. Yeah. I know I talk to you guys every day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Training, but it's different. Uh, obviously, they go to bed early, so me and my wife get some time in the evening to kind of re uh, relax and unwind. But in the morning, they're up and calm our oldest thing. Anybody who knows him knows she's ready to go as soon as he wakes up. So I met the boy myself. Yeah. The boy is ready to go. <laughs> yeah, so this morning, he woke up at like 5.45, and he was like, I have a soccer game. Guys, cleats on, and we were about to play. So he's nonstop, but it's wow. the best thing ever. So. What's so now that you got the seeds, family, everything? What's like a day in the life for you now? Before, um, before and after training, you said you get up early, you got to take care of the sons outside early. What's it like, you know, after training for you? Yeah, so in the morning, I, I usually go to mass, go to church at 7 a.m. Uh, just to start my day, how I want to start it with the Lord. And then after that, um, I go from mass back home, have breakfast with the family, everybody's up by then, and then. Um, go straight to training. Uh, I know me and you like to go early when one of our assistant coaches get some extra touches. After that, uh, after training, sometimes I go to the gym with um, John Litton, our strength coach, go back home, and by then it's probably 2.30, 3 o'clock, and from that time, the nap times are done, and so it's full go, play with Callum and Caden mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. 6, 7 o'clock, dinner time, mm -hmm. eat as a family, which is important for us, and then yeah. bedtime, and that's pretty much it. You got like two sessions in a day. You can't just relax and go home like the average player, you know? Like things change. I'm not at that level yet too, but <laughs> yeah. just got married myself too, man. Yeah. Every everything kind of changes now too. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, my bro, you know, for me personally, I haven't been haven't seen, you know, we've been playing together for some time, but I haven't been back here for a couple of years now. So and from your perspective, how is this season going for you in your mind? Yeah, I think um it's obviously different because we returned so many guys and then the guys we brought in like yourself are familiar players for us so I think it's huge um, chemistry wise and like the fluidity of the team to keep the team together after we had a successful year last year and then um, bringing yourself and Carlton and, and JC and new guys like that who add something to the squad right away um, they're veteran players so um, I think it was huge and uh, obviously we lost the opener which was kind of a a frustrating game but to bounce back and go eight games undefeated after that is huge so it's off to a good start and we have a big game Friday against Omaha two top teams in the league so um, I think it's it's off to a decent start but we obviously know we can be better and yeah. I think we're all hungry for that too yeah that's, that's kind of been the same for me as well too preseason was okay it wasn't we had a fine identity a lot of guys came probably halfway through preseason yeah. as well too so it took us some time as well and like you said, kind of bounce back from that home opener game, put seven games in a row, changing formation, changing new players, just hopping in. It's like a testament to you know our character in the locker room as mm -hmm. well too. Has there been any issues in your mind as far as the season? Talk about some some of the issues and some of the positives as well too. Yeah, I think um, always in the beginning it's hard to get that fluidity up front and scoring goals. Mm -hmm. um, so when we did add JC late, I think he definitely came in and gave us a. 
immediate threat up there that the other team had to worry about. And so um, for him and Luis, who already have a connection being from Honduras together, and um, add that in with Joel and our attacking threats, like we were able to see that everybody became more effective right away. Some of the good things is I think we went on a streak of like um, four or five games of the most we got scored on was one goal in, those, in that stretch. So defensively, we've been sound uh, for us in the back. And then Austin in goal is another strength. He's been doing his thing. Um, but I think now like we're becoming a more complete team. Like last game, even though we lost, like we put together some of our best chances. So um, I think I think we're definitely building on what we thought we needed to work on. Yeah, I agree with that as well too. We've uh, you know had some injuries early on in the year. Over time himself too, kind of changed our ways. But you know, in a positive overall too, like you said, we haven't been giving up too many goals. Kind of have our backbone as well too. And now these guys in front are starting to click some more too, which is helping us as well too. Yeah, definitely, I would agree. So talk to me about these last three years from 2021 when we last played together to now 2024. What's it been like for you not taking over the armband from Enzo? Yeah. Thanks, shout out Enzo. I got to <laughs> yeah. too. But, you know, kind of leading this club in, I wouldn't say a different direction, but in your own personal direction mm -hmm. for these last three years. Yeah, no, I think um, obviously it's a huge honor to be the captain of the club of what I think of home, I think of Charlotte. So being the captain of the club here is huge. And, when I was given the armband, I think one thing I wanted to, I wanted the guys to know right away is, and I'm not going to change. I'm going to do what I do, go early, be the first one there, last to leave, because um, I don't want to change who I am just because yeah. I got the armband. And yeah. I'm not going to start yelling at guys. I'm not going to start like being negative and try to lead that way. I'm just going to lead by example and and try to work hard and show the guys that I care about them just as much as they want to get better. I want them to get better and. Um, so obviously it's a big responsibility. Um, you know it being Captain Monterey, like it does weigh on you, but yeah. I think there's a good way, like it's a privilege to be in that um, that position. And I hope that the guys in the locker room, hope you in the locker room can see that like, I want all of us to succeed. Like no matter what it takes, I just want the team to win. And mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, as a captain it's doing the little things right every day. So the past three years I've been trying to pride myself on, you know, I'm gonna be the first one there. I'm gonna go out early and work hard because that's what got me to be a pro in the first place. And what got me to be in this position as a captain. So I don't want that to change. So I think being a servant leader and, and making sure these guys know that I want them to get better and be successful is just as bad as I want to. And amen, he's been a great leader for us thus far as well too. Thanks. It's definitely good to see, you know, I got my experience as well too, but you know, transitioning to this year, this is the reason why we have this locker room together still. Mm -hmm. If you haven't heard his story as well too, we're not diving in, into his, his background story. He's already been on a previous episode a couple of years ago. Definitely look back, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, all that. Check out his full story as well, too. We're kind of transitioning from that as well, kind of progressing, doing the next part of that as well, too. So, but yeah, my bro, I, I feel that exact same way, especially seeing you in your realm as well, too. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's great to see you as well, too, growing up, stepping up and being a leader. You're still the first one there, still doing the training. And I can see the younger guys feeding off that as well, too. Yeah, another, yeah, I appreciate that. Another thing I would add, too, is like, <clears throat> When I was named captain, I told Mike and the staff, I was like, from the guy who doesn't touch the field at all to the guy who's starting every game, like I've been in those roles. I've mm -hmm. been in the guy who's not even making the 18. Mm -hmm. um, so I want those guys like that. Mm -hmm. I won't name them, but they aren't even in the 18. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, like I know exactly how you feel. Mm -hmm. This is just like a little hump in the road. It's a roller coaster. You gotta stay level. You gotta keep doing what you're doing. But that is another thing is like, I can relate to all of them. And that's why you're a great leader as well too, because that's so important. A lot of times the leader might be from a higher prestige division or a league as well too, and he kind of shuns out the younger players. But you need that here, as I realized, especially mm -hmm. going down the league, we have a lot of high schoolers, a lot of younger players. Mm -hmm. Gotta kind of put your arm around them and you do that exact thing too. Yeah, I would say that's definitely like one of the biggest differences that you mentioned is mm -hmm. the, our starting 11, I would say we have a bunch of veterans, but then after that, like there's a lot of young guys who mm -hmm. need that arm around them and need that guidance because they're so young in their career. Yeah, so talk about that going from now, when you first made your debut in the USA mm -hmm. Championship to now going to leave one. Talk about, we'll, we'll dive into the play itself, but just the club. What was it like now dealing with, you know, veteran players, experienced guys from all over to now kind of just some younger players? Yeah, so obviously when I was in championship for three years with yourself and the other guys, I was one of the younger guys, one of the less experienced guys, so I had to fight and claw my way into the starting 11, and yeah. I did, and got a lot of valuable experience there. So when I transitioned into League One, um, I, you know, I heard some other offers from different clubs, but we had just had Callum, our oldest, and mm -hmm. my wife's community mm -hmm. is here, our community is here, and I think that was like really important to not pull her away from that. Mm -hmm. And I saw a big opportunity to be a leader of this club and um, to take us to hopefully a League One championship. We've been close. 
Um, so yeah, I think like the biggest difference I noticed right away is the age of some of the guys. Like I said, the starting 11 and in our starting 11, we have a lot of veterans, a lot of older guys. But when it drops off, it's not like championship where it kind of like gradually drops off and there's some experienced guys on the bench. Mm -hmm. A lot of times with League One, not just our club, but you know, the the, ro the other side of the roster doesn't play as much, is really young and doesn't have any pro experience, if any at all. Mm -hmm. So. I think that that was definitely a big difference because you can see it in training, but mm -hmm. like credit to those guys. I remember being a freshman for the first time, like you just got to come in and battle and yeah. the guys do it really well. And that's one of the big differences now. You got these high school boys training with us now. I mean, we would have loved to be in high school to train with some of You know, you had the MLS Reserve League, but it wasn't as structured as it is now. You got mm -hmm. kids for going college now at 16 years old yeah. to become a pro. When back even when you came to the league in 2019, we weren't even thinking about that really yeah. still. But because I feel the CBA have a little more structure, the league's also promoting the youth as well, sending these players overseas and MLS and bigger divisions. Yeah. Like they've been promoting it a lot more. Definitely, I think I think uh, it's became more like a secure option. Like mm -hmm. MLS, I think they do something with like their education too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think USL is doing that. Yeah, like they have, yeah, there's yeah. some scholarship yeah. So I think that those kids are seeing like if I do go to this college. And don't really progress but i can start as a professional at 18 mm -hmm. on an academy contract and hopefully earn a contract and it's like i think i have a better route that way what would you recommend to a kid now with the structure a little more stability that's a great point about the stability because we didn't have a minimum wage before you didn't have a minimum um tenure in your contract but i.e like 10 months 12 months kind of thing so what would you recommend to a young player now yeah i mean i, I think if i was a young player i would try to get an academy contract first and then have honest conversations with them. If I was somebody who was getting minutes with the first team, be like, hey, look, I, I mean, I'm not set on college, but if you do think I could earn a decent salary here and you think I would play first team minutes and battle first team minutes, then I might as well start my career four years earlier and mm -hmm. get the scholarship, or not scholarship, get the degree on the side because mm -hmm. you can get it for free now. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I think that's definitely a conversation to have. But if it's somebody who's just trying to force it to be a pro, just force it, force it, force it. I think college is definitely a safer route. And I mean, both you and I have incredible experiences at college. Um, and if we didn't go to college, we probably wouldn't be here today. So I, I definitely see both sides of it. I think yeah. it just um, depends on who it is and the situation they're in. I wanted to dive a little deeper on that too, but just brought up a little topic that we've had conversations about as well, the mentality of mm -hmm. like college kids versus the kids that go straight to pro. You mentioned, you know, kids you would recommend them going to an academy contract. You dove into it a little bit and that's important because you still keep your eligibility even if you don't make it to become a pro but talk about the mentality a little bit now with the younger players who forego college and then players like ourselves and still the young players will kind of go to college and go and turn to a pro yeah i would say like we always talk about it the people who have gone to college say like we we're more uh, equipped to handle like the day-to-day -day right away and like enjoying yourself on the weekend, but showing up the next day and still getting training done, mm -hmm. um, or going from training to lift, or lift mm -hmm. to training, whatever it is. Um, I think college like definitely equipped us for that, being mm -hmm. able to handle um, all that, the load of the sessions each day. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's definitely a benefit of that. I mean, college is crazy. Like you go through the schedule mm -hmm. three months and it's two days, mm -hmm. game every other day it feels like. Mm -hmm. and classes, everything. Classes, like. you gotta juggle all that. Mm -hmm. So I think there's there's definitely a benefit to it. And I think that's something I, I read the benefit from. Yeah, I used to, years ago I used to say, you know, kids should just forego college and you know, turn pro because it's good to be a teenager training with pros getting touches. But honestly, it's a little mixture of both for me now and just seeing how the locker rooms change, even mm -hmm. not just this year when I was in Monterey, just the mentality's kind of changed now. And it surprised me to see younger players, you know, take a day off or so just because they weren't feeling too well or had maybe a little knock where we're, we're coming from. We would sacrifice yeah. one leg just to be on the field kind of thing where if you know, you can mention, you know, you got to drink before with some teammates or your family, you still suck it up and push it to the next day mm -hmm. and you make sure you're ready. So college, college, teaches you a lot, especially the balance of the time, the schedules, you gotta get up in the morning. You know, got kids now showing up late to training, yeah. showing up late to the bus, showing up late to the airport, just giggling, not really caring. Mm -hmm. But it blew our mind because we would never be like that, but I see where college comes and how it just structures mm -hmm. you a little bit too, yeah. so. I mean, think about like the time management you have to learn in college and the structure you're on. Like, And if you're late in college, you know those coaches, That's they're, true. they're crazy. You're done, so you're done. I think, it, I mean, it definitely did teach us. Yeah. How's League One been for you these last three years? Uh, good. I mean, I, it's definitely progressing. Like the first year, um, I think there was definitely gaps in the league, bottom to top of the table. Um, 
But now, I mean, you've been here, played like five or six league games mm -hmm. and the uh, Jägermeister Cup too. And you can see like everybody does pose a threat and everybody like can play at a level that's pretty high. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of transition between League One Championship, Championship League yeah. One, um, MLS Academies to here, yeah. MLS First Team to here, we have some yeah. guys. So, um, I mean, the level is there. Like, I think our starting 11, we all but two or three have championship experience, yeah, yeah, or just one or two. That's true. Um, and so true. I think it's uh, definitely increasing, like each year, each season, you can see it in the style of play, the goals that are scored. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I think it's a really good level. Yeah, I would say in my, my first couple of months here as well too, it kind of surprised me. I would say it's a little older than I thought as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just watching League One for the last couple of years. I feel like it was, I thought it was, you know, just a younger league. Maybe some players are, you know, looking to stay in their hometown will play, but more so on the younger to kind of just like MLS next. But I would say now it's more so, you know, got experienced USL championship guys coming down to play and like making sure League One's good. Almost every out of the twelve teams, probably ten to twelve of us has great yeah. experience now. And we we are one of the older teams, but there's still teams like that are older than us, even like Spokane coming mm -hmm. to league for the first time. Their average age is 27, 20. They bought just pure experience too. And it took me by surprise in a great way as well, too. Because it brings the quality of the League One, it brings the quality of the championship. You mm -hmm. see an Open Cup, we were one of the last three teams, you know, remaining as well too. But the other two teams, Omaha, Tormenta, any any of the League One teams could have beat championship teams as well too. Oh, for so, sure, yeah. It was good to see. Mm -hmm. It was good to see. Um, but talk to me real quick though. Why? Why you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I always wanted to know myself. Why did you kind of stay here when the league when the team dropped out? Yeah. So, um, like the most important thing for me is my family. Um, and I think as a husband, like my job is to provide and like to keep them safe. And mm -hmm. that goes in the depth of like, my wife, thankfully is a, it's a blessing she can stay home with our kids. So I want her to be around our community. Um, when Callum gets to the age of school and co-ops and stuff like that, I want her to be around like-minded women who raise their kids the same way and same with me and the community I have that make me a better man. Um, so Callum was just born in October. I knew we were going league one like November whenever it came out mm -hmm. um, and then my agent was obviously working on a couple of championship teams I actually had an offer from a championship team and it just in my gut I just didn't think it was the right decision to pull my wife away just for mm -hmm. at the time it was just an ego thing like oh, I can't mm -hmm. drop to league one I wanted to stay championship mm -hmm. and it's like I need to put my pride aside and then uh, when I did um, through prayer and like trying to sit back and see the 30,000 views like you have a beautiful opportunity to raise your family here in mm -hmm. Charlotte to lead this club that you love to stay home, which is home to us, and to hopefully bring a trophy. And so all of that's going really well, we just need a trophy now. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, yeah, that was like probably the, the main thing is like making sure my family was safe and um, taken care of. And then I, I guess the other thing too is like, um, I love the club, like obviously the coaches gave me my career. So mm -hmm. I thought it was special. Like you don't really see somebody staying at one team their mm -hmm. whole career. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that will happen. Like God willing, whatever happens, happens. But um, that's kind of where my mind was at. That's so true though, bro, because it's deeper than us now, you know? And you touched on a great point about the pride aspect about coming to League One as well too. I, myself, you know, played a little role in myself as well too, coming coming down to this league as well too, but you kind of got to put the pride aside if, you, if this is what you want to do, but not just myself. I know a good amount of championship players even right now who don't have a team, right. but didn't really want to bite the bullet and drop down to League One, they'd rather just retire and get their education, do something else mm -hmm. instead of dropping to League One too. It's definitely a prideful thing as well, but at the end of the day, it's a bigger cause, bigger issues, the family, like you said, I'm, I'm in a similar situation where you can't just move for yourself as right. well. And if you did, it's really just kind of your ego now, feeding that, you know, I want to play more, I want to play right. a championship now, but it's really the best route for you and your family kind of thing. You got to yeah. think about all those little things. Mm -hmm. And I like to ask you too, when I came down, or not down, when I, when I re-signed and we were League One, like when you get into the day-to-day, -day, like really not much has changed. Mm -hmm. Like the level of training is still there. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. still training at the same place. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the same faces. So it's like, yeah, you in League One, but I think you can probably attest to it. Like our training level is probably just as high as championship, mm -hmm. give mm -hmm. or take a couple of players. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so true though. Like literally when I had to switch back to step into the sports plex, like I instantly mm -hmm. had the same kind of deja vu to when I was in the championship. But besides a couple of high schoolers, like you said, we have a, a very good core and one of the older teams as well too. So it's good to be back here at this point in our careers, just, you know, having ease of mind, knowing Mike, knowing the system, knowing training sessions still have good quality around we guys actually want to you know take it a little bit more serious but mm -hmm. 
we still have that as well, and it's great to see. Yeah, for sure. Tell us how you have how you've grown since you first signed two thousand nineteen till now as a leader. How have you grown as a player? Uh, as a player, first, I mean, obviously, like getting the experience with championship. I mean, my rookie year, like we had a crazy roster in twenty nineteen. Mm, and yeah, I just tried to soak all the knowledge I could in from there. And obviously made my debut, ended up starting. And going in 2020, kind of had like a breakout year, so to say, um, during all the craziness of COVID. 2021, we had another crazy roster. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, it was just gaining all the knowledge I could mm -hmm. and watching you guys and the veterans play and train and their day-to-day -day life and just learning. And then now I feel like I've just taken my game to a different level just with my confidence and knowledge from guys I've learned from like yourself and older guys like that um, and so yeah I think I think it's just uh, a lot of experience uh, a lot of learning um, and just being humble enough to take in advice because it hasn't always been easy but um, I think like being humble and listening is, is definitely a big part of any successful player and that's why you keep resigning and keep playing as well because you're humble as well too and I think that's something I, I emphasize that as well the other podcasts other players as well so you have this no matter what role honestly even if you're a captain and your leader you can still listen and learn from yes. a player maybe from a bench player who tells you yo Clay just check your shoulders a little more this and that if you're not humble enough to listen that Maybe you go into the game, he just told you that you don't listen and you just get scored on, or you could have just listened and maybe adjust a little bit more and it makes you a so much better player. And all those little things go a long way, my bro. So I've seen, you know, when you first came out here, you were a right back, probably only a right back, left back now, right back now, right center back now, six if we need you to, you know, all them things just up hands your quality as well too, and probably just increase your game as well too. But you don't want to be just a one dimensional player. We want to play at the end of the day. So sometimes yeah. you gotta play in different positions too. Yeah. So it's exactly what I've seen, man. It's great to see that progression. I appreciate it. So talk to us on a deeper note as well, too, about your surgery. Mm -hmm. How did that come about last year? And yeah. talk to us about the whole process through that. Yeah, so that's probably, like, the most significant event I had, like, injury-wise. Um, I've never really been injured. The worst I had was, like, a sprained ankle, so that's, like, 10, 12 days. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I uh, started having neck pain after a game, went out for a couple more headers in the next game, and then began to get, like, tingles and electric shock down my body, which, fast forward a couple days, it turned into, like, weakness and lack of feeling on my left side. So then me and the trainer kind of figured, all right, this, these are red flags, we should go get it checked out. We thought it was just nerve pain, um, or we thought I was, like, low in some type of blood thing where there was an infection in my blood. Um, so we took all the tests we could, everything came back normal, so let's get an MRI on your neck because um, like that's where you said you have some pain. Went to get the MRI and saw that one of my discs was completely ruptured and usually when the disc ruptured it just pokes into your nerve. Mm -hmm. So it's not too bad, like you can fix that without surgery or anything, but this one had gone all the way to my spinal cord and compressed it like almost completely. So um, I was like thankfully um, and blessed enough to not be permanently damaged. Mm -hmm. But the thing was we had to get in there as quick as possible, get that disc and the one below it out, put fake ones in and see, from there it was kind of just jeopardy of like, if I'm gonna get back the stuff that I had lost, cause they said when the spinal cord is hurt, mm -hmm. it's kind of just praying and hoping that it goes well. So I had neurosurgery with a great neurosurgeon here in Charlotte. Um, got the two fake ones in, and then from there it was just a waiting game to see what neurological stuff I got back and what I didn't. So like even now sitting here, I can still feel my left side is a little mm -hmm. weird, a little, mm -hmm. feels a little weird. I was gonna but ask you about that. Yeah, like I still feel it in my fingers and my toes. Do you my, do something to counteract that? Or? I can, but like once it gets to a certain point, it won't progress anymore. So I've done just about everything. I still do exercises every day. Yeah, like, I see it. Yeah, so I still have to do all that. Um, but yeah, thankfully, by the grace of God, I got back to playing, like which, uh, wasn't really thought of as a possibility in the beginning. Mm -hmm. A kind of a cool fact, like I'm the first professional athlete to come back from this exact surgery. People mm -hmm. have done it with like one one layer, but one level with minus two. So yeah. pretty cool to Amen. make some history. Amen. Seriously. Yeah. So in terms of the rehab, what was that like for you? Obviously, and not 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 necessarily from the physical aspect because you're doing rehab every day. Mm -hmm. You know, too. But how was it like for you mentally getting through oh. that? Like I told you, I've never been lower at a lower point in my life. And it was so hard because we had just had our second. Mm -hmm. So everybody's expecting us to be so happy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And my two-year-old son, all he wants to do is play with dad. Mm -hmm. And I'm bedridden for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I can't even leave the bed. Like my wife has to help me wow. use the restroom, has to help, has to shower me. And like, 
it was, yeah, it was super humbling. I was just, you know, as an athlete, you just want to go out and work out or compete. And you couldn't even do that. So I was like trying to find ways. And this is in the middle of the season last year as mm-hmm. well, too. And the team is going on a run, going into the playoffs. Probably started like off July, August. Uh, yeah, it was the end of July, beginning of August, and then surgery was in September. Yep, not right before. I saw you right before yeah. that as well, too. Yeah, so then obviously like going into off season, I got the surgery in September, October, November. It was mm-hmm. December, game was all rehab. And it takes its toll. Like I've never been injured like that. So mm-hmm. to go from like being a fully able professional athlete to like my first day of rehab my left side of my body wasn't even working I didn't even pick up my left leg so I'm like where I just broke down I'm not even crying bro and I just started crying I was like is this ever going to come back all right you're like we can't promise you it will but like we're gonna do our best to make it come back so it was just every single day with spinal cord specialists um, as well as doing rehab on my own at home um, just trying to get my brain to work with my left side again so how are you keeping yourself up? Are you talking to yourself every day, reading the scripture more, mm-hmm. going to church more, you know, leaning on the fam some more? And how, how are you getting through your daily life through that? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I go to the daily mass, go to church every morning, mm-hmm. and that's when I really started doing it. Mm-hmm. Just spending time in prayer and sitting with the Lord, because obviously that's who I turn to when things mm-hmm. go wrong. Um, I know you're a believer as well, so I just wanted to sit there and be like, look, God, I'm super angry, but um, I know you have a plan for this. I know you can give me strength, so... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was just talking with him and turning to him in prayer. And obviously my wife was amazing through it all. She was super understanding. Um, sometimes she would just let me like completely vent. I know I called you and a couple other close friends sometimes. We just like need to vent because some people will stop by and be like, oh, you're going to be all good. And it's like, you don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you just need to vent and get that bad energy out. I ask because it's so important, you know, kids are getting injured more nowadays. Everyone asked both me and you in general, how do we get through injuries? You know, you went through, but you went through something life changing as well too. And I know I'm sure there's someone else going through a life changing situation. So it's important that they can hear their a different way to be uplifted too, because we all yeah. need to be uplifted in our environments. And it was the same similar thing for me too, bro. I got my first major injury last year oh, yeah. off, off the bike accident. Yeah. Like, and I'm in California. My wife's here in alone. Charlotte. I'm all alone doing the same rehab in the pool. And it was a the whole month of May too, man. I'm Man, I've never gone through something mentally like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? And now that I did this career, I look back in and I, I said to myself, I had to go through that injury. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, you can't go you, through a whole. You feel me? Career. Without something, right? Like. And like I said earlier, like you're you're able to relate to guys. Now. Right, right. And like we right. can relate to these people. So like, true. Exactly. Like, I've never experienced rehab every day. I used to see them guys every day. Like, damn, I feel for them. Yeah, I don't well, you know. Can, you can I don't know. Them. Yeah. Now that I know, bro, like I, I take I even tell players take your time even yeah. get back from my injury because I rushed it myself. I wanted to play against LAFC in the Open Cup game. Mm-hmm. Ten days after my injury, I wanted to play and I did a fitness test before and reaggravated so bad where I couldn't even walk, kind of thing. So I took the whole month of myself just take my time, my body back. But man, I, I needed that time. And yeah, it's important in those times too to have your your support system as well. Too, mm-hmm. my support system was far, but I called you all the time, call my wife, call my family, my parents, that kind of thing. But those were the times that got me through the moments yeah. as well too, man. Yeah, so, it's character building for sure. Yeah, oh yeah, it is. But the end of the show, though, I want to do something a little different, have a little fun as well too. Right. I got some questions for you. The first, tell us what's your favorite team. Chelsea. I support Chelsea. We're going through it this year, but... Why Chelsea? Yeah. You have a favorite player? Growing up, I like watching Didier Drogba, John Terry, Frank Lampard, and the crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was a lot of fun, but um, I'll stick with them even though. All right, all right, all right. I'm a Barca fan, but Barca? I was Henry, Terry Henry, Arsenal okay. days, too. So a little Arsenal in my background, too. Right. Give me... Who's the best players you play with and against? I'll do with first. Okay. Uh... Probably Sylvain Margot in mm. overtime because mm. both those guys at the peak play at the highest mm. level. And I would have to throw in uh, El Mono, Jorge Herrera. Mm. Yeah, I'm mm. glad I got to play with him before his <laughs> career ended because, yeah. Um, yeah, bro, that guy is yeah. talented yeah. and he's like solid earth. What yeah. a great guy and a professional. What a great professional. He's 5'5", five, five, doing things, playing yeah. how long, 20 years yeah. almost, 20 scoring years. goals, jumping over defenders, my height, like man. Like, yeah, bro, you're right about that. Me too. Mm-hmm. What about you? For You would go the same? For um, Yeah, and I'll, I'll put Fuchs in there too. Oh, yeah. It was good for me to see from a center back. I was playing, we played the three, I was a middle mm-hmm. center back. But, you know, there's people that just up their quality. And for me to see another center back, he found out – a pass in every situation. He was almost never scared, almost never nervous. So I was like, okay, let me try something. He can do it, I can do it. 
But I never would have tried those things if I didn't see yeah. him do those things too. So I guess my mind went to attacking first. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Fuchs is up there for sure. I mean, he won the Premier yeah, League, yeah, and like yeah. when he came, it was it was super humble about mm-hmm. working with us, and like he taught me too. some stuff as well. And I wasn't even starting when he came. I'll give him that. And then too. games I started, he was right there to cheer you on. So yeah. all those guys. I mean, all three of them are super team oriented, nice guys. I'll add just some USL legends, Canardo Ford, and I'm, I even put Enzo in there as well too. Yeah, it's good. Enzo up my quality. Legend. Yeah, he up my quality. Those well. 26 coming in as well too, mm-hmm. definitely. Up you my know quality. who I'll throw in there that people might not recognize? Joel Johnson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Joel, yes, his sir. peak is. Yes, I mean, he debuted with uh, Valencia when they had uh, Juan Mata. <sighs> David Silva, when I am right, was the coach. Yeah. That guy, he's a baller, bro. He's one of the youngest to make his debut in La Liga mm-hmm. history still, or the club's history. Yeah, well, this is history, yeah. What about, what about against? <sighs> against, I mean, when we played switchbacks in 2021, you caught Haji Berry and Michi Ingolina oh, yeah. in their prime wow. prime. And that was like, <laughs> that was different. They were, I don't know, like, I mean, they were That's full cool. of confidence. They were, each of them were scoring every single game. That's a good one. And in their prime, I'm going to put them up there. Yeah, that's a good one. Damn. On their day, like, <laughs> on their day in 2021, they were untouchable. They scored some crazy goals. Yeah. We were up like 2 or 3 0, and they came back in the blink of an eye. I remember Haji picked up the ball from the right. center back because we, yes. we were up 2 or 3 0. And yeah. he was like tired. He went to pick the ball at center back. A couple passes later, he's finishing in the box. I was like, so I'll put them there. I'll put. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, we just played Atlanta United, so some of those guys are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the guy who came yeah. on, Xander Silva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. played at Nottingham Forest, and I mean, mm-hmm. as a winger, he's mm-hmm. really good. So mm-hmm. we'll put uh, some guys at Atlanta United there too. Mm-hmm. I guess for me, um, I go way, way back to like my first two years in the league. Matt Fondi was playing at Little uh, Louis Bellum and mm-hmm. Matt Fondi, but. He used to play in the MLS a little bit. It was probably my second year in the league. He just gave me a handful. Was it forward? Forward. It was one of them strikers who just played off behind you, off sides the whole time, and it always combined, mm-hmm. always find the play, bro. And I, I got to put Dane Kelly in there, too. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe, like, him and Romario, like, a mix, but we always – we're not going to that. We always kind of got the best of Romario and Charles and then days, but Dane – Hey, out now, goal scorer, Dane's up there. Dane's up there. Dane, I'm going to give him. He works hard. Yeah, he's a handful. It's about his craft. Like, mm-hmm. yes, yes. For a shorter player as well, too. Yeah. The tag up. Somebody there. Ooh. This is a 2 3 1? Yeah, so. Okay. This is your 10. Yeah, this is, my, this is a big, this big is position. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. I already got my front three picked out. Who's the team? You go to the, the front three. Gabby at winger. Okay. Sylvain at winger. Okay. Jorge Herrera mm-hmm. with Dane. You can you can alternate that. You choose you gotta choose one now. In their prime. In their prime prime? <laughs> Give me Jorge at the ten, Dane up front. Ooh, I like Boom. that. I like that. That's, and they can rotate. That's a good one. Yeah, we that's wanna be fluid. One. That's a good uh, one you. as well. All right. So I'll go Joe Willis. He's the starting goalkeeper right now for Nashville. Played with me in Richmond. That boy, that boy, nice too. Confident on the ball. I'm going a 4-3-3 diamond, Barcelona diamond. Mm -hmm. Left back, I'm going to go with... I like a Gutman shout. Yeah. Him or Abdullah, but I'll go with Gutman. Ooh, that's a shout too. (laughs) I forgot about Abdullah. I'll I'll go with Gutman too. Um, center backs. I have Fuchs in there, left center back, and William Yambi. You don't know. I don't know if you're, you know who he was, but he was there my first three years in Richmond too. Okay. OG, let Warrior, <laughs> like Kalunji, <laughs> but Warrior. Okay. Um, right back. Um, yo yo, can I make one change? Yeah, 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 go ahead. So I'm gonna have Jorge up front. Dane's gonna come in at the end of the game. Mm. Kevon George at the six, mm, next to Brand, my... Enzo at the ten. That's the one. Boom. Yeah. Okay. I just had to throw that in. Yeah, that's that's, that's a good one. Because he's my six. Uh, right, yeah. back. right back, the top. This is because of my boy. I'm gonna put Alex Lee. He was uh, right back out in Richmond for the FC yeah, Dallas. So, yeah, all that. Him and Joel are, are definitely neck and neck for me though. All right, my three. I got one holding six Busquets. That's Kevon for me. Mm-hmm. Kevon George, Gordon Boy. 
left foot, right foot clean. Yo, um, he's underrated. Nah, bro, bro. <laughs> I know you and I talk about it all the time, but this guy was a baller. No, like, y'all don't understand, yo. No. I wish COVID didn't happen because it messed up his whole career, yeah. bro. But baller, baller. Um, I'm gonna just go with. Enzo in there in front with Canardo uh, um, Forbes. No. Oh, Canardo, Enzo, man. and Key are my three in the middle. Um, then my three up top, I'm a Sylvain Marveau, right right side, tucking him on his left. I'm gonna give Gabby his thing too, as well, too. Gabby Overton on the left wing, checking in with his right. Up top. You played with some good forwards. Yeah, I'm going to have to say Corey Burke, Mm -hmm. one of the starters for Philly Union, probably Red Bull right now. He's neck and neck for me because I can go my boy Seku, who was tied at the time. Mm -hmm. Him and Corey were very similar. Honestly, if I I can have Seku, Philly, when we play each other in 2017, bro, brother, I'm telling you. Different level. Different level, bro. Like, my high check, it's good technical ability. Like, Corey's more in behind. Sick was coming to feet, checking in, hold it up, all that. Um, them two are neck and neck. But, yeah, that, that's that's my three right there, too. And Dane's coming off the bench for me, too. But, yeah, that's that's my 11 for me. I like it, too. That's solid. Yes, sir. But, my God, I appreciate you, y'all. Like I said, listen to his pre, pre, uh, prior stories, one well, of the past episodes, the last couple of years. Tune in with my guy. How can they find you on social media? At Clay Dimmick almost everywhere, so I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Give my boy a follow. My G, appreciate you always. Yes, sir. See y'all Friday night. Yes, sir. Friday night. Got an attitude, but you better say so I ain't mad at you. And you tell it to what I gotta do to be having you. I pay the avenue, top five, sixty, and a savage soul. Yeah, ass fat, I know you eat the rice and your cabbage too She a savage too, I'm a savage too, it's compatible She was talking practice, had to cut her off, got a battle boo I ain't chicken to the if you find my brother, I ain't mad at you Fucking in the kitchen, we ain't even make it to the master room Met her in the trade, so she sucking different and she tatted too And she independent, swear this bitch is different and she nasty too Yeah, my body different, when I move for yeah, I'm an animal And her body different, I'ma eat on that bitch like I'm Hannibal I'ma act a fool, I get active too, I'ma eat that pussy like an edible